If you're a good, healthy sleeper, you'll sleep a regular sleep pattern seven days a week. That means that your bedtime and your wake time are pretty consistent seven days a week. And uh, so regular sleep times are, are good. And adults will sleep on average between seven and nine hours. So on average about seven and a half, eight hours. But that varies across individuals. So uh, some people will only need as six and a half hours. Other people will need nine hours. And, and so that's just the natural distribution of, of sleep times. And so as an individual you need to figure out how much sleep you need but children require a lot more sleep and a lot of people don't really know that so uh, three to five year olds require 10 to 13 hours of sleep there's qu there's quite a range there again to, to account for individual differences between people um, school age children six to twelve years old still require nine to twelve hours of sleep this is according to recommendations by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine um, Teenagers, 13 to 18 year olds, still require 8 to 10 hours of sleep. We know it's important for your optimal functioning and performance. Uh, we know that it's necessary for mood regulation, for memory, for attention. So if, you, if you're not getting the sleep you need, even on one night, um, your, your performance is going to be affected. Your reaction time is going to be slower, your memory is going to be impaired, and, and your attention will be impaired. And then if you uh, habitually cut down on the sleep you need. You, the research shows there's actually a cumulative effect of those deficits on your performance and, and uh, emotional well-being. Okay, I think one of the most important things people can do is to think about it and make time for a good night's sleep. Uh, for many people, they just aren't allowing themselves enough hours in bed to get the sleep they need. So the first step is to pay attention to how much sleep do you need as an individual? What is your sleep time, your sleep number? How many hours do you need? And then look at the clock. How much time do you actually need to spend in bed uh, to, to get that amount of sleep? So that's the first thing is, is to make time for sleep. The second thing is, again, to keep a regular schedule. Um, so uh, many people will sleep longer on weekends. It's a bit appetitive. It's, it's enjoyable. So just like maybe eating more when the meal is good, if you have more time on a weekend, you might sleep more. But you really shouldn't sleep that much more. Um, you should try to have a consistent schedule seven days a week. And um, as well, you should have a good sleep environment that's conducive to sleep. So make sure it's quiet and uh, the right temperature and, and uh, minimal lighting and, and so forth. So you should make sure your bedroom environment's comfortable. And all these things sound like common sense. And if you are a good sleeper right now in your life, these are things you, that probably happen quite automatically. You don't think much about it. But if you're a poor sleeper, if you have insomnia, then these are things that you need to spend a lot more time thinking about to get your sleep back on track. So insomnia is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep most nights of the week on a chronic basis. And a, a lot of Canadians actually suffer from chronic insomnia. And uh, so for these people, they need to pay attention to these tips on sleep hygiene quite a bit more, keeping a regular schedule, allowing enough time for sleep, and, and setting the bedroom environment to be conducive to sleep. Yeah. And so what you need to do is focus on getting your sleep back on track and retraining yourself to become a good sleeper because you've developed all these awful habits about sleep that, that sort of steal away from your opportunity to sleep. So you need to get things back on track. Sleeping pills are not prescribed in the long term. The, pill al the bottle always says take intermittently and short term. And a, a big problem, and especially in the elderly, is that's not necessarily the way people are taking them. But certainly they are prescribed to be intermittent short term use. And in that way they can help you get a little bit of sleep, but you have to have that behavioral component for long term improved sleep. Yeah, so one of the problems for insomnia is that you're, uh, you're learning to associate your bedroom environment and your bedroom routine with being awake. So your brain actually becomes conditioned as soon as I go and I brush my teeth and I get my pajamas and I get into bed, my brain is associating that activity with being awake. So even if I'm sleepy, as soon as I get in bed, all of a sudden I'm wide awake. Why is that? It's a behavioral conditioning that happens. And so that's the cycle that needs to be broken. So to put it very simply, you need to spend less time awake in your bedroom. Your bedroom should be a place for sleep only. So if you are having trouble sleeping, no TV in the, in the bedroom and, and, and certainly no iPads with the bright light is another problem. One of the therapies with insomnia is if you are lying there awake for more than half an hour, you should actually get up out of bed so that you're not having that brain trained to be awake during, during your bedtime.